Hi. In this video I'm going to review a couple of tools that might help you mesh difficult geometry. If your geometry has major flaws coming out of a CAD system with maybe a missing face or a face that's twisted badly, it may not mesh no matter what you try. Sometimes, however, you can use built-in tools within Workbench Mechanical to be able to get a mesh. It will be up to you whether that mesh is satisfactory for the kind of analysis that you want to do. Here's a model. I have just one body active, the rest are suppressed. If I click the virtual topology branch that I've inserted at present, there are no entities. I can go and click on a body of interest, and at virtual topology I can right-click and have virtual cells generated on selected entities. This is one thing that might help you get meshing on bodies that give you trouble meshing otherwise. This will put virtual cells only on the bodies that you select. There are further controls as to what gets turned into a virtual cell. It could be edges only, for example. Behavior? You might start with the setting of low, but there's also medium and high and edges only. This tool might not be your first resort, but sometimes it will help you get a mesh. If I mesh this, it can be meshed in this particular example because the geometry does not have any major flaws. Now a person might zoom in here and see that there are going to be rather sharp ends on the elements that mesh locally. I'm going to use this model though to talk about settings that aid meshing geometry that's more difficult than this. If we look under the mesh branch itself, you'll see default conditions here. Note that I could have mesh defeaturing active, and if I turn it on, I have the chance to indicate a defeature size. That could be the size of some small geometric entity in the model that I want the mesh to ignore, to just wash over entirely. Under quality, I could play with error limits. Here I have aggressive mechanical. If I go to standard mechanical, then the software will permit more badly shaped elements. That'll sometimes help you get a mesh to work, but if you want more accurate results or if you want the model to cope with large strains, you might want the aggressive mechanical setting. Up here you can see physics preference is mechanical. If I went to nonlinear mechanical, then when meshing, the software would not tolerate element shapes that are as severely distorted, but it will be harder to get a mesh. You can see here a default feature size. It's going to be based on the geometry of the entire model. I could put a number in here. If I put in, for example, 0.01, that's a fairly big distance. You can see 0.013 is the length of this black bar. So this might defeature some geometry that's of fair size. Let's see what happens when we mesh. You can see that geometric detail has been ignored. There's the geometry. There's the mesh. Obviously, this was far too large a number. What if I go to 002 and mesh again? Now you can see that we obtained a mesh. Let's turn off mesh defeaturing. Let's look at something else. Patch independent meshing. Now patch independent meshing will ignore the boundaries on the faces in the model and elements can wash across things that they otherwise might not go across. I've already turned on mesh based defeaturing and I've put in a defeature size which is somewhat large and you can see two circles where the cursor is placed when I move around my cursor on the screen. There's a defeature size and then there's a minimum size limit. If you play with it, you'll discover that your defeature size has to be a smaller number than the minimum size limit. There's 009 and it's too big. 
Put in 007 and it's accepted. Evidently, the D feature size is the smaller circle on the screen and the minimum size limit is the larger circle where I'm moving around the cursor. Looking at patch independent, we need to make sure that it's unsuppressed. And now let's see what happens when we mesh. Note that there was an information message telling us the patch independent option for tetrahedron method controls has been deprecated and may be removed in a future release. This tool's not going to stick around in the long term, but in the present release, it's available. Now if I click on my faces, you can see that there are elements that disregard the boundaries on faces in the model. The patch independent meshing, with its defeaturing size, is washing over some of the geometric details. So this tool can be used to ignore small splinter-like pieces of geometry and very short edges that may be causing trouble when you attempt to mesh your model. Something here I'd like to note. Look at the size of the elements right here. If I go to face sizing and unsuppress it, I have a face here and I've told it to have very small elements. And that little circle shows you how big I've requested them to be. Let's do a quick remeshing of the model. You can see that the mesh is very fine in here where we applied that face sizing. But if we zoom in and click on the face of interest, you'll see that the elements don't actually respect the boundaries of that one face, and yet they do become smaller because of the extra control. That might be of interest. The face sizing is suppressed, I'd like to show something. Here we've put a slight force in the model, but the value is an extremely small number. So it's pretty much a do-nothing entry, but it is going to make the mesh respect these chosen faces, even though we're doing patch-independent meshing overall. Let's have a look at the result of that. Generate a mesh. And if we go in and click on those two faces, you'll see that on the boundary, the elements respect that overall patch. Even though the internal line is not respected, the outer perimeter of those two chosen faces is respected by the mesh that develops. What I'm trying to show you here is that if you do put some kind of a load or support on selected faces, then patch-independent meshing will not gloss over the places where a force was applied. That might be helpful. There's one final thing I'd like to mention. If I go back and click on the global mesh control, if you look down here, I have initial size seed. Normally, the starting size for elements is based on the dimensions of the active bodies in the model. On rare occasions, if you have bodies of various sizes, some of the smaller ones might not mesh successfully. If you have your initial size seed based on the part size, then small parts will get smaller elements, large parts will get larger elements, and this might result in successful meshing on smaller parts that are giving you trouble. We have had a customer mention that some parts did not mesh, but if the problem parts were brought in individually, then under default controls they would mesh. And the problem might go away if the initial size seed was set at the part level. With that, I hope you find this has given you some useful ideas, and good luck with your meshing. Thanks for joining me.